A sequel to The Shining. Yes, you heard that right. The Shining. 40 years later. The question is, did we need it? And is it good? Mike Flanagan, it's on you. Better not disappoint me here. Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep is the sequel to The Shining that took 40 years to make. It finally came out this year. Actually, not quite 40 years. Almost 40 years. The original came out in 1980. But anyway, this one's directed by Mike Flanagan. It stars Ewan McGregor and uh, Rebecca Ferguson. And basically, it follow or it takes place several decades after the original Shining took place. Ewan McGregor is playing an older Daniel Torrance who is the little, the little boy in the original Shining. He's older now, and he still has his Shining ability, at least that's what they call it. And he eventually comes into contact with this little girl named Abra, who also has the Shining uh, capability. But anyway, what happens is Rebecca Ferguson, she plays Rose the Hat, the villain of this movie, and basically, she's trying to harness, like, all the shining powers to herself, basically, and her, and her crew. Like, yeah, like, all her crew. She wants to harness the powers all to herself, and so it's up to Ewan McGregor and uh, Abra to stop that. Alright, let's get into Dr. Sleep. Admittedly, when they first announced that there would be a sequel to The Shining, my first thought was, why? Why do we need this? Why is it necessary? Like, it's been almost 40 years since the original Shining came out, and now we're finally getting a sequel? Why? But then I found out that Stephen King actually wrote a sequel to The Shining back in, like, 2013 or something like that, earlier this decade. I didn't know it at the time this movie was first announced. So that's why I was initially like, okay, why? And then I heard that Stephen King actually wrote a sequel, and I saw that Mike Flanagan was directing, and I like Flanagan's films. Like, really, everything except for Ouija Origin of Evil, and I guess Before I Wake to a certain extent, Before I Wake is still a decent movie. But, yeah, everything except for Ouija Origin of Evil, I absolutely really like from him. I think he's one of the better horror directors working today. So that definitely brought my hopes up a lot more. Still a little bit skeptical because, I mean, 39 years later, anything can happen. It could be, gr it could be the horror version of Blade Runner 2049, or it could be just a complete misfire. Thankfully, though, this movie is awesome. It's an awesome horror film. It's an awesome sequel to The Shining. I think it does it justice. Mike Flanagan did a really nice job. I absolutely love this movie. So let's get into why I loved it. First of all, the performances. Ian McGregor is absolutely fantastic. This is probably his best performance since The Impossible, if not maybe even longer before that. But yeah, this is definitely up there as one of his best performances. He was so good as Danny Torrance. Uh, Kate Kylie Curon, is that how you pronounce her name? The girl that plays Abra. She was also really good in this movie. I thought she did a really nice job. There are times where I felt like she could have shown more emotion, but that didn't really bother me too much. For the most part, her performance in this movie was really good. But the standout of this movie is without question Rebecca Ferguson. Wow, she was a menace. And I love the range of emotion that she has in this movie. Like, in a lot of horror movies, you don't really see the villain get scared at all. This movie, you definitely see her get scared a few times. So I like that. I really liked that addition to this movie. And she's easily one of the best villains of the year, for sure. And like, yeah, she does some really messed up things. But then again, so does Pennywise. So... I don't know why people are bashing her for this movie and not like Pennywise and It and It or It Chapter 2. So yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me. She does some messed up things, but you can understand why she's doing it. And she and unlike Pennywise, she doesn't come off as like a live action cartoon character all the time. 
So yeah, I absolutely loved Rebecca Ferguson in this movie. This might be her best performance. I don't know. It's definitely up there as one of her best. So yeah, she's basically everything that Pennywise tries to be but fails. So yeah, I definitely think that she's the biggest standout of this movie. And just the way Mike Flanagan directs this movie is absolutely brilliant. The cinematography is fantastic. The sound design, the musical score is still as haunting as ever, just like the original film. And just all the horror sequences in general. Like, they're shot really well, they're, they're edited really well. And, like, is the movie scary? Oh, yeah, you betcha, especially in the second half. The second half of this movie is worth the price of admission alone. Like, actually, really, there's a scene in this movie involving a baseball player. Like, everything from that scene on is just pure horror, like, pure horror, I don't know what to call it, pure horror gold, I guess. But, yeah, it's Mike Flanagan showing, like, how much of a master at horror he is. He's a really good horror director, and his direction of this movie is just really really good that's really the best way I can put it but yeah and of course the final act of this movie it's like it might come off as fan service to some it's filled to the brim with nostalgia but you know what I loved it for that and I thought it was absolutely done or it was brilliantly done I thought it was absolutely amazing and there's another sequence in this movie where I were like I mean, the whole movie was like this, but another sequence in particular where I just was white-knuckling the armrests in the theater when I was seeing it. Like, I could not let go. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. And the suspense in this movie is absolutely amazing. And the ending to this movie as well, I'm not going to lie. When I saw the ending to this movie, I will admit, there, my eyes did start to well up a little bit. And that's unusual for a, for a horror film to show that kind of emotion. But it did that, and I thought it did it really well. And, and there's also, like, an action sequence in this movie. Kind of weird for a horror film, but you know what? I loved it for that. Like, Mike Flanagan definitely does the original Shining justice. It might not be as good as the original Shining, but I do feel like he does it justice. He knew what he was doing, and he knew exactly, like when to use like nostalgia and whatnot and when to like rely on event like scenes from the previous film there are scenes from the original shining in this movie but unlike it chapter two mike flanagan knows exactly when to use them and how to use them so yeah i thought they did a really good job incorporating scenes from the original shining into this movie as well and some of the cgi in this movie is really good too just thought I'd point that out. Now, is this movie as good as the original Shining? No. In fact, I think if you go into this movie expecting it to be as good as the original Shining, I think you're going to be disappointed. Because there's definitely, like, it's definitely not as good. But, honestly, I didn't really need it to be. My one main issue with this movie is the mainly the the pacing in like the first 30 to 45 minutes I thought it was a very slow start to begin with and honestly I was kind of bored for that first 30 to 45 minutes I do feel like this movie's 152 minutes long it's two and a half hours it's one of the longest horror films out there I do feel like it could have gotten away with like a two hour 10 two hour 20 somewhere in that 130 to 140 minute range I feel like it could have gotten away with that but really that's the only thing I can think of Overall, guys, I absolutely love Dr. Sleep. It's not only one of the best horror films of the year. In fact, I actually do think it is the best horror film of the year. I do think it's better than Us. Yes, I do. But yeah, I do think it's the best horror film of the year, and it's also one of the best horror films of this entire decade. I thought it was a great sequel that I didn't know we needed. It was a great sequel to The Shining. It definitely does the original Shining justice. So, yeah, despite the runtime and the fact that the first act or so is a little bit slow, I still adore this movie nonetheless, and I do kind of want to go see it again. Like, I'm not the type of person that... I usually don't like horror films. 
and when I see them, almost certainly I'll never see them more than once. But this is one of the few times where I actually am considering going to see this again. So yeah, that should tell you something right there, how good this movie is. But nonetheless, as for my score, I'm going to give this movie a 91% certified fresh rating. That is a solid A. Alright, so there's my review of Dr. Sleep. I am sorry it's like a week and a half late now, but I wanted to get this review out for you guys anyway. And I've got a couple other reviews coming up soon. Ford vs. Ferrari, I saw that movie this weekend. Hopefully I'll be able to review that soon. As well as a couple other movies maybe. I might do two or three more reviews. I haven't really decided yet. I've seen a lot of movies lately. Midway, Jojo Rabbit, Last Christmas, and there's two Disney Plus original films that I saw, Lady and the Tramp and Noel. I don't know if I'm going to... I'm not going to review all of those films on here, but I'll probably... Fine. I'll probably try to at least review a couple of them. Ford vs. Ferrari is the one I need to focus on getting out, though, so that's probably going to be my next review. But make sure to hit that thumbs up button on this video if you, if you enjoy my stuff. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content to come in the future. And until my next video, once again, my name is the California Cougar. And always remember to stay California cool. Peace.